One of the common reasons trademark applications get refused in the US is because trademark applicants fail to submit acceptable specimens of use for all goods and services listed in their trademark applications. My name is Andre Minkoff, I'm the founder of Trademark Factory. And in this video, I'll share with you everything you need to know about specimens of use, what makes them acceptable, as well as the do's and don'ts around specimens of use. And in the second part of this video, we'll even go through specific industries with which trademark owners usually struggle to provide acceptable specimens of use the most. Ready? Get it trademarked with Trademark Factory. All right, a few important introductory words of wisdom. Since we're going to be talking about specimens of use, it's important to understand what use actually is. Trademark use is a legal term that relates to using your brand in commerce as a trademark to identify your products and services. And in most countries, you don't need to prove use to register or renew your trademark. However, you cannot register or renew a US trademark until and unless you show acceptable evidence of use of your trademark as filed or as registered for all products and services listed in your trademark application. Let me repeat that. In the US, you cannot register or renew your trademark until and unless you show acceptable evidence of use of your trademark as filed or as registered for all products and services listed in your trademark application. Now, there are different rules for what constitutes use of your trademark in connection with physical products and what constitutes use of your trademark in connection with services. A trademark is used in association with products when the public can see the trademark on the products themselves, their packaging, tags, labels, or in some cases, documentation at the time the products are sold or transported for sale. A trademark is used in association with services when the public can see the trademark during sale, rendition, or, and this is important, advertising of the services. As you can probably tell already, it's easier to prove use of your trademark in connection with services because unlike with physical products, simply showing that you're using your trademark to advertise your services is enough to prove use of your trademark, whereas using your trademark to advertise your products is not enough. But I'm jumping ahead of myself. Let's go through several examples of what constitutes acceptable specimens of use. Number one, when you place your trademark on the product itself. So the specimen would show a photograph of your product with your trademark clearly visible on the product. Number two, trademarks on labels and tags. If your product has labels or tags, you can show a photograph of those tags bearing your trademark. And we'll talk about this in detail in the second part of the video, but placing your trademark on labels and tags is the most widely accepted form of a specimen of use for apparel. Number three, trademarks on packaging. If you sell your products in a box or some other sort of packaging and the package has your trademark printed on it, provide a photograph of the packaging to show use. Number four, displays where products are sold. You may also show photographs of branded displays, fridges, and similar things that hold your products for sale in public. Number five, web pages with buy now feature. Now remember, simply advertising your products is not considered proper use of a trademark in connection with products. A website is generally considered advertising, which would be fine for services, but not products. So if you wanna use your website as evidence of use of your trademark in connection with your products, it needs to be a page that clearly links your products to your trademark at a time when the public is purchasing your products. In other words, a screenshot of your homepage that says, buy QRSTP gadgets, they're the best in the world, that would not work. 
However, a screenshot of a page that says QRSTP gadget shows a picture and the price with an add to cart button would usually be acceptable. That would usually work. Number six, web pages with download links. If you're trademarking your brand in connection with downloadable products like books, software, educational or entertainment materials, you can show a screenshot of a web page with the download link. Entertainment and education can be both a service and a product. So for trademarking services in class 41, you simply need to show that you're advertising or making your services available under that brand. For products though, you should show the use of your trademark at the moment the public gets something tangible from you, even if it's just a downloaded file. Number seven, web pages that advertise your services. Now I already mentioned that in order to prove use, in connection with services, it's sufficient to show that you're using the trademark to advertise your services. And having a website that bears your trademark where you use the trademark to advertise your services is usually sufficient. Note of warning here though, if your trademark is a word mark, make sure you format it on your website to stand out from the rest of the text. Why? Well, because it needs to clearly identify your services and not be used as part of your marketing copy. Number eight, TV, radio, web ads for services. Similarly, if you're on TV, radio, web ads for services, you can submit them as evidence of use. And when I say submit them, it can be screenshots, could be links to the actual video, could be uh, recordings of the uh, jingle, whatever it is. Number nine, Marketing materials for services, business cards, flyers, all sorts of marketing materials that show your trademark in connection with advertising your services would normally be acceptable specimens of use. Number 10, signage where services are provided. A sign with the name of your store, if you're trademarking your brand in class 35 for retail services, or your restaurant, or your accounting firm, all of that would serve as an acceptable specimen of use, as long as it's clear what your photograph actually shows. Simply drawing your trademark on the wall would not be good enough, since you have to be able to make the case that the sign is what your customers see when they consume the service you're providing to them. Number 11, materials for use with services, menus, band signs, banners, and other similar items could also support your use of the trademark. Okay, so that's what typically works as an acceptable specimen of use. Now, I have a few words of caution for you. First of all, and this is extremely important, your evidence must be real. No Photoshop, no digital mockups. And yes, the USPTO is very serious about that kind of stuff. Your trademark can be denied or canceled if you try to sneak in doctored evidence. Simply do not do it. Second, your evidence must show the actual trademark as filed. No variations are allowed. This is why when we have clients who are not sure if they're gonna have a space between two words or whether there should be an exclamation mark at the end or, or similar things like that, we always tell them, pick a variant for which you know you'll be able to provide a specimen of use. Third, you must have evidence for all products and services you claim to be in use. If you file your trademark for a whole list of products and services in one or several classes, you're required to submit evidence for at least one of the products and services for each class. However, the USPTO examiner may require that you provide evidence for all other products and services as well. And if you can't produce that evidence, you may find yourself in trouble and needing to delete those products and services from your application. Fourth, for specimens of use required to get your trademark registered in the US, you must show use of your trademark in the US. It means that if you're trying to trademark a brand for let's say lawn mowing services, and you provide a screenshot of a website that says you only offer your services in Canada, it may be rejected as failing to show evidence of use in the US. 
Now to summarize, it's not enough for you to use your trademark. You must have proper evidence to support it. Also, do not lie or fabricate evidence about use or dates of first use because the USPTO may reject the application. And even if it lets it through, your trademark may be canceled for fraud in the future. All right, so now that we've gone through the basics, let's go through several specific industries and examples. Class 25, apparel, clothing. Acceptable specimens of use for apparel would include photographs showing your trademark on tags, inside your clothing, or otherwise showing your trademark as a non-dominant feature of the design of your apparel. Why non-dominant? Well, because the USPTO may reject such use as merely ornamental. And we have a separate video about ornamental trademarks and we also have a separate video about trademarking t-shirt brands. But the idea here is that trademarks are not supposed to cover sayings or designs for the literary or artistic value of those sayings or designs. Trademarks exist to help the market identify your products and services apart from identical or similar products and services of everyone else. So simply placing your huge logo in the middle of a t-shirt or a baseball cap may not be considered an acceptable specimen of use. Now, to make sure we're on the same page and we had a bunch of clients ask us about this, there's nothing wrong with placing your huge logo in the middle of a shirt or a baseball cap. It doesn't mean you can't trademark your logo. What it means is that in addition to placing your huge logo in the middle of your shirt or a baseball cap, you also wanna show that you have a small version of the same logo on a tag or somewhere where the logo is not a dominant part of your apparel's design. Next, class 16, books. In the US, you can only trademark a title of a series of books, not a title of a single book. And since you can only trademark a title of a series of books, you need to show that the trademark is being used as a title of a series of books, which means you need to show at least two books under the same umbrella title. Harry Potter or For Dummies books are great examples of that. Next, class nine, software as a product. Acceptable specimens of use for software as a product, as opposed to software as a service, and we'll get to that in a moment. So acceptable specimens of use for software as a product would include photographs showing your trademarks on disks, screenshots of the software itself, its packaging, or uh, maybe a web page with a clear download link. What would not work are pictures of ads. Now remember, advertising a product does not count as acceptable specimen of use for products, right? Uh, web pages with no download link or uh, pages that don't show how users can get a copy of your software would not work either. And while we're at it, class 42, software as a service. Now this is usually easier to prove. You can show screenshots of your ads, you can show a sign-in page with your trademark, or you can show your application screen itself. Again, as long as it bears the trademark. What wouldn't work is when you show your trademark on software that is not offered as a service to the public because, for example, uh, download links without more are typically not admissible for class 42, right? You have to show that after they download the, the, the software or get it on a disk, there's actually uh, something happening on the back end as a service. All right, moving on to class 35, retail and online sales. Acceptable specimens of use would include photographs of your trademark shown on the storefront, store signage, or on a web page featuring your products for sale. What would not work a photograph showing your trademark on specific products being sold or uh, not showing the sale of products at all. Now, for example, a photograph with an IKEA furniture may prove use of the trademark in connection with a product furniture, but it does not show the use of the trademark in connection with retail sales as a service, right? Similarly, uh, simply showing a review website that talks about mattresses does not demonstrate the use of a trademark in connection with online sale as a service. Next, 
we have class 21 mugs water bottles and stuff like that what works is if you show your trademark on the bottom of the mug or otherwise as a non-dominant design of the bottle now really it's the same idea here as with clothing simply slapping your logo as a dominant design on someone else's bottle doesn't make it legitimate use of your trademark in connection with bottles uh, and on to class 18 bags acceptable specimens would include photographs of your trademarks on tags locks um, anywhere inside the bag same idea as with clothing or mugs uh, as long as the brand is not a dominant design feature of the bag it normally qualifies and conversely if all you do is slap your logo on a generic bag you may not support the use of your trademark in connection with bags they might go through but don't bet your farm on it and um, finally podcasts um, podcasts can be both class 9 for podcasts as a product typically referring to downloadable podcasts and uh, class 41 for services typically referring to the educational or entertainment services provided in the form of a podcast as you can probably tell by now the evidence in support of these two classes would be very different uh, for downloadable podcasts in class 9 you must show the trademark in context of how people can download your podcast so that they end up with something tangible, even if it's just a file, right? Yes, there are third-party tools that allow you to download pretty much any streaming content. But if you can't show the download link provided for uh, through the actual platform, it will not serve as an acceptable specimen of use. Just because people can uh, download uh, doesn't mean that they're supposed to okay and you have to show evidence that they're supposed to download that's that th this is how you provide the, the product as for class 41 all you need to do is show the trademark in connection with the education or entertainment that your podcast provides so the same screenshot of a page without the download link can well qualify as evidence to support the use of your trademark in class 41 what won't work as evidence is when your specimen does not show how the public can consume the podcast. A screenshot of a homepage that says that you have a podcast is not enough, right? A menu item on your website that mentions your podcast is not enough. You must provide evidence that shows specifically where and how the public can consume your podcast. So there you have it. As you can see, there are a lot of tricky rules around specimens of use. In fact, this is probably the topic that generates the most back and forth between us and our clients because we make sure that the evidence you submit to support your trademark applications is likely to be accepted by the USPTO. And sometimes it even leads to frustration with email exchanges that go along the lines of, this is my brand, I offer these services, and I sell these products, what else do you want from me? We need you to provide a specimen of use that the USPTO will accept. What exactly do you need from me? Why isn't the PDF that I sent you acceptable? Well, it's because of this and that. Okay, and what about this screenshot? Will that work, right? And on and on and on. Don't get me wrong, I get it. We don't expect our clients to be experts in trademarking. That's why they hire us to register their trademarks with a guaranteed result for a guaranteed budget. Over the years, we've figured out how to explain these requirements in a much simpler way. So the exchanges like these are now an exception rather than the norm. And this video is basically the summary of all of that. If you're a Trademark Factory client and we sent you a link to this video as we're finalizing your trademark application or registration, I want to personally thank you for watching it. I'm sure it will help you make your interaction with our legal team much easier. And if you're not a Trademark Factory client yet, but you have a brand you want to trademark, what are you waiting for? Follow the link in the description and schedule your free call with one of our strategy advisors and they'll help you get started with the process. We will either help you trademark your brand with a guaranteed result for a guaranteed budget or you get all your money back. 
really simple as that. And either way, whether you're a client or not, make sure you subscribe to this channel to get notified whenever the next video goes live. And I'll see you in the next video. Get it, trademark.